again to Hoboken Free Live uh, streaming, and we're glad to have everybody here. It's good to be with you, uh, even if I am just on a screen in your living room or bedroom or wherever it is you're watching this from. Uh, we're glad, or at your dining room table or kitchen table, wherever. It doesn't matter. You're enjoying it. Uh, most of you are probably just lounging around in your pajamas still, which is great. Um, but we're glad to have everybody here. And if you're new to Hoboken Free, uh, we're glad that you've come and checked this out and, and are joining us with our first live stream event. Um, as you can tell, it is our first one with all the technical issues we had, but we're glad to have uh, you here with us as well. A um, couple announcements. We just want to go through some announcements with everything that's going on um, in the world right now and what's happening um, with coronavirus and everything. We just want to go over a couple announcements to get you caught up to date of what's going on here at the church and what our plans are moving forward and, and how we plan to address certain issues uh, that we're doing. First is our community groups. Um, and you're going to hear more about this as we go through the morning um, and our time together. But community groups, we really want you guys to still be meeting and be connecting. Um, and so if you are new, if this is your first time checking out Hoboken Free and you're not, um, or maybe you've been here for a while, but you're still not connected into a community group, we want you to get involved in a community group, especially now more than ever. Um, it's a way that you can stay connected with the, with the church body and with us as a whole. Um, and you can uh, really be uh, involved with one another and, and engaging with one another. And so we want you to continue to meet as community groups. So jump on Zoom, Skype, um, FaceTime, whatever platform you want to use, uh, go ahead and jump on there. Spend time together praying with one another, doing your devotions, doing your Bible studies together, um, just doing life the best that we can right now uh, through those platforms. And so we encourage you to do that. And again, if you're not part of a community group and you want to get involved in one, uh, just email the office. And you go to our webpage that you're on right now, uh, and you can find our office email, and you can send us an email, and we'll get you connected uh, into um, a community group uh, where you can uh, be involved and get connected with others. Um, we are going to be, over the next few weeks and this week coming up, we're going to be upping our, our uh, social media presence and our online presence. Uh, we are going to be um, <clears throat> looking at uh, using our Instagram and our Facebook you can connect to those on the webpage here. There should be links above, up in the top corner to our Instagram and our Facebook pages. So you can go to those and sign up to be able to follow us. Um, if you're not on Facebook or Instagram, it's a good time to get connected uh, just so that we can stay connected through this time. Um, and so we're going to be upping our presence on those areas. So we're going to be uploading videos and daily devotionals and, and weekly devotionals and, and um, stories and different things like that. We're just so we're going to be doing life together through that. Uh, so that we can uh, just be encouraging one another and, and praying for one another. Um, we'll also be posting videos onto our YouTube channel as well. And we'll put a link for that um, later today onto the webpage as well. Um, you got an email this morning, uh, a couple emails now this morning, sorry about that, um, with con uh, links to some children's ministry stuff, so you can be uh, connecting to that uh, for your kids. Um, also, uh, by next week, we hope to have a few songs that maybe you can listen to uh, if you feel led to listen to those before you come to the live stream, um, spend some time singing worship songs together as a family um, and worshiping the Lord before you come uh, to watch the message um, and watch this uh, live. Um, again, we're going to be putting out some devotionals throughout the week uh, in video format on, on the Instagram and Facebook platforms and YouTube as well. So uh, be, be looking out for that. Um, take advantage of the Right Now Media subscription that the church offers as well. Um, right now, Media has tens of thousands of uh, devotionals and Bible studies and uh, kids' ministry stuff, uh, videos for kids and, and lessons. Uh, so you take advantage of that. It's a free service that we offer. Um, and so connect on that. If you don't have the link to, to log in, email the office again, and we will send out the link to you so you can get connected to that. It's, it's free to you. We pay for it as a church, and we offer it up to you. And it's another great way uh, to stay connected uh, during this time. Um, and get encouraged throughout the week. Um, if you need prayer, uh, you can email uh, the office or um, in the weekly email that you get, there's a link there to email um, Lauren, who's in charge of our prayer team, and then know that the leaders and the prayer team are going to be praying for you throughout the week. Um, so if you have any prayer requests, please get on there and, and use that. Um, and so the original site that we were going to send you to, I think they're just overloaded with a, a ton of churches uh, right now. That's why it's not working well. 
Um, but on there, there's a link for prayer requests, and there's a chat room that we're hoping to be able to, to use. We might be able to get a chat uh, stream on this page as well. So we're going to look into that this week so that we can be encouraging one another and, and sharing our prayer requests that way. But make sure that you're sending out those prayer requests so that we can be praying for you and engaging with you as well. Um, giving. Uh, we um, are not going to stop doing ministry. We are not stopping our mission here at Hoboken Free. We're going to stay on mission, doing what God has called us to do and being who God has called us to be. And so we need your support. We still need your support. And so listen, if you're just checking us out, this is your first time checking out Hoboken Free uh, through the online or even in person. Um, you've never been here before. Uh, this message, this announcement really isn't intended for you. Um, this is for the people who call Hoboken Free Church their home. And so if you do, if you call Hoboken Free Church your home and you are committed to this local gathering of believers and, and the body of Christ, we ask that you continue to give. Um, on this page, on the HobokenEFC.org website, there is a, a button in the menu called Donate. You can go there, you can download the Tithely app, and you can give online through the Tithely app, or uh, the, the mailing address is there. You can... Uh, mail in a check if you feel more comfortable doing that. You can mail in a check uh, to us, and we will make sure that it, it keeps going. Because, like I said, we're going to stay on mission. We have missionaries that we support. We have ministries that we support, and so we want to keep going with that. And and so we want to. We don't want to stop doing our ministry. And so we just we need you to continue to give, even though we're not meeting in person. Um, and so we encourage you to do that. And so thank you for that and for your support. Um, if you are new, if this is your first time checking out. <clears throat> Um, Hoboken Free, you can go to the Connect With Us uh, page on our, <clears throat> on, our um, on our website, and uh, you can send us an email, and we will send you some more information about us here at Hoboken Free. You can also just poke around on the webpage and find out some more information, but we'd love to hear from you if this is your first time checking us out. Just email the office, uh, office at hobokenefc.org. And let us know who you are and, and check in with us, and we will reach back out to you. We'd love to, to uh, connect with you in that way as well. Um, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for all the announcements that we have this morning. Um, we got, yeah, so there's a lot going on. And look, I know um, that this is all new to us. This is new to me, you know, putting together a live stream and standing in my office by myself, talking to a camera um is is weird and it's different and it's it, it feels different um and so uh but we're going to get through this god is going to carry us through this he has not forgotten us he's not going to forsake us um he is with us in this and so i want to encourage you with that that we are all together in this and we're going to be together through this and we're going to make it through this because we have jesus and he is going to carry us through and so uh we're here for you and so again if you have prayer requests you have needs you have uh, just concerns you will need somebody to talk to you feel lonely or whatever it is uh, just reach out to us um, and we will uh, be more than happy to engage with you and and, and connect with you uh, we want to do that and so we want to serve you in that way so please reach out to us um, and we'll we'll figure this all out and we'll we'll walk through this together so uh, but let's pray and then we're going to get jumping into what god has for us this morning as we continue in our series so let's pray Heavenly father again we thank you uh, for today, we thank you for you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for uh, the fact that you do pursue us on a daily basis, that you, uh, <coughs> excuse me, desire to know us, that you desire to be in relationship with us. Lord, that you desire to engage with us. And so now, Lord, as we come to you to engage with you and to be with your word, I pray, Lord, that you will speak to us, that you will open our hearts and our minds to wondrous things from your word, that you would challenge us. Lord, we pray for those who are being affected by, uh, all of us are being affected in some way by this coronavirus. We pray for those who are who are ill from it. Lord, that you would bring healing. Lord, that you would stop the spread of this, this virus, that you would uh, put an end to it um, quickly. Uh, we know that your healing hand can move in that way, but Lord, we know that if it takes a little bit longer, we know that's your will, and, and we will trust you through it, uh, but Lord, we pray that you will bring calmness to us, that you will bring peace to our hearts, that you will help work through our anxieties and our worries and our, our uh, struggles, Lord, as we deal with being quarantined and, and the social distancing. Lord, we just pray that you will uh, use your spirit in a powerful way to, to comfort us and work in us and through us. Uh, Lord, that you will change us through this process, Lord, to help us become more like you. 
Lord, again, we, we pray that you will move powerfully through this, that you will uh, put an end to this virus, and that we can come back together in person again soon. Uh, but until then, Lord, that we would be your church in the place that you put us, and uh, that we would be able to serve one another uh, even through this. Lord, uh, now, again, we come before your word and we ask, Lord, that you will speak to us. Lord, change us, mold us to become more like you. Use this time in a powerful way, Lord. Uh, to make us more like you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, welcome, and we're glad to have everybody here. Here at Hoboken Free, for those of you who are new, and those of you who aren't, you hear this all the time, but those of you who are new, we want you to know, here at Hoboken Free, we want to be known about one, all, all about one thing, and that is all about Jesus and his love for us and passionately pursuing him in that. And so we do that in three ways here at Hoboken Free. We, we call them our core values, our three S's. Uh, they are to be stirred by Scripture. That means that we devote daily to God's Word. We get into God's Word on a daily basis, and we read it, we meditate on it, we study it. We allow it to come into our, our hearts and our minds and our lives and stir us on to action him, for Him. We devote to Him. We pursue Him by, by learning more about Him through His Word. And so we want to be stirred by Scripture. The second is that we want to struggle well with life together. What that means here is that we get into community with one another. We do life together authentically and transparently. We're going to talk more about this this morning, uh, but we are going to be, we want to be struggling well with life together by living authentically and transparently with one another, sharing our hopes and our joys and our hardships, everything in between, Lord. We want to share those and what we're going through so we can pray for one another, we can hold each other up, we can counsel one another, and we can pursue one another and love one another uh, through that. And so we want to be struggle, we want to struggle well with life together, and we do that in our community groups, and that's why it's important to get connected to one of our community groups. Uh, thirdly, we want to serve others. We want to, whether it's here in this local gathering, when we're able to get back together, or in our community as a whole, we want to serve others the way that Christ has served us. And so we want to be out there, and we want to reach out, and we want to engage missionally by serving others, because Christ first came to engage us and to serve us. And so that's who we are, and that's how we want to live that we, that's how we feel God has called us to live that out in our lives. And so we're asking that you join us in that. And, and, and so we encourage you to do that. And if you have any questions or, or uh, want to know more about that, again, email us, reach out to us, call the office, and we'll be glad to talk it through with you. And so, uh, again, welcome, and we're glad to have you here. We've been walking through this series called We Are the Church uh, the last two weeks. Uh, and we got one more, two more weeks of it left. Um, and so we're looking at what does it mean to be the church and what, who are we as a church? And we're looking at our three core values and, and vision, visioning ahead to where we feel God is calling us in the near future and the dis, not so distant future. And so last week we talked about what it means to be stirred by scripture, what it means to devote daily to God. And we devote daily to God and allow him to, like I said before, come into our lives and, and teach us more about him and stir us on to, to action for him and to pursue him relationally as he pursues us. This morning, we're going to talk about what it means to struggle well with life together, what it means to be in biblical community with one another. Um, you know, imagine having friends who are committed to you, uh, not just to you, but mainly to, to following Jesus with you, uh, who are committed to, to, to know you and love you, to encourage you and remind you of God's best for you. Uh, who are there to help you use your gifts and abilities in impactful ways. Uh, you, you will laugh together. You sometimes cry together. Um, you invest deeply in each other, uh, united by your common bond in Jesus Christ. That's what biblical community is. That does, that, the question is, does that sound like something you'd like? I, 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 it sounds like something I would like, and I'm pretty sure it sounds like something that you would like as well. And so that's what we want to do. We want to live out biblical community by struggling well with life together. E Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12 says this, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, and he and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Although a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Biblical community, threefold cord, working together, people in community together, working together, biblical community. But what is that? 
Put simply, biblical community happens when Christians commit to being intentional with each other for the purpose of growing in their love of God. Being intentional with one another. Being intentional with each other and with others. It's what life looks like when believers follow the Bible's teaching on how they should live. That's a pretty broad definition, though, right? Bro- uh, biblical biblical community, that's, that's a broad topic, and that was a broad definition. So we're, we're going to take a few small bites here this morning as we walk through what does biblical community and struggling well with life together look like at Hoboken Free. God's Word has many things to say about doing life according to God's plan. Biblical community here at Hoboken Free and, and what we feel the Bible teaches us seeks to live out the greatest commandment in the Bible, which is to love God and love others as Jesus commands us in Matthew 27. Community is also a response to Jesus' instruction to his followers that they love one another like he has loved them, he commands us in John chapter 13. If it's as simple as loving God and loving others, though, you might be wondering why are we spending so much time on it this morning? Now, the Bible gives us a lot more details and examples of how our love is expressed through action. Many of them are explained in about 50 verses. There's about 50 verses that that have what the Bible calls the the one another's. If you want to know how to love, then these are the verses that are for you. These are what God calls us to do, to be the one to do the one another's of them. You know, in Romans uh, 16, 16, it says that we are to greet one another with a holy kiss. Look, right now that's probably not a really good idea, right? Um, but and that's not really part of our culture to greet one another with a holy kiss. But there are more practical verses that will explain what it looks like to love those we're in community with here in, in our setting, in our community, in our, uh, in our day and age, and, and, the, and even with the issues that we're facing today. They, they are, uh, there's 10 of them, they are that we are to prefer one another. It tells us in Romans 12, chapter, 10, uh, chapter 12, verse 10. It tells us to accept one another in Romans 15, and to encourage one another in 1 Thessalonians, to comfort one another in 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, to forgive one another in Ephesians, to admonish one another in, in Colossians, to pray for one another in James, and to care for one another in Galatians, to confess in James as well. Uh, and to serve one another in 1 Peter 4. And so if you're pursuing community to get Christian friends to study the Bible and to get an accountability partner, those are all great things. They really are. But I think you might be selling yourself short in some other areas. You might be setting your sights a little too low. We here at Hope of Your Free encourage you to pray that God uses biblical community to make you more like Jesus. Romans 8 calls us to that. And that's a lofty target. That's a high target to try and reach for. But it's one that we feel that God is calling us to. And it's one that we feel and we believe that God will means to use to bring significant growth and change in your life. And God will be with you every step of the way, He tells us. Uh, Paul tells us in Hebrews 13. You know, it's also important to remember that you can't change yourself or other people through your own wisdom, power, or influence. It's God who is at work in you to help you to think and act in ways that would honor Him, Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 2. It's God who began a good work in your life, and He's the one who's going to complete that work. Paul, again, tells us in Philippians 1. And so God is the source of the transforming power of biblical community, and He is the reason that we live this way. So if your group... Uh, if in your group, community group you try to do it on your own, relying on yourselves, you'll get nowhere. If we as Hoboken Free as a whole try to live this out and try to do this all on our own, we're not going to get anywhere. It's only through seeking God together and putting our trust in God together and, and, and allowing Him to do the change that we will see an impact and see a difference. It's when we put our trust in God And we together and point each other to his word for truth. When we live according to his ways, that's where the transformation begins to happen. He's the one who's going to finish it. So if he began the good work in you, he is faithful to finish it. And so we, we rely on that truth and we trust in that truth. 
that God is going to continue to work in us to change us and mold us to become more like him. And as we get started, though, it's, it's important to remember that we live in community out of love and obedience, not legalism. Jesus tells us that anyone who loves him obeys his teaching. He tells us in John 14, part of loving Jesus is doing what his word says. But we can't forget why we obey. We love God because he first loved us, he tells us in 1 John uh, chapter 4, 19. So as we live in community, we're responding to the love that God has shown us first, not earning his love by how we live. Look, the way that you live isn't going to take away God's love or add more of God's love to it. It's, it's already there. God can't love you any more than he already does. And he loves you more than anybody else could ever love you. And so the way that we live doesn't change that. But the way we live is based out of that. It's a reflection of that. It's a response to that love. And so we live in community and we obey in community and we seek to follow God in community because he loves us and he has chased after us. Look, as we mentioned above, there, there's, there's many verses that talk about living in community with one, with one another. right? There's the 50 verses of the one another's. We boiled it down to 10. But we've at Hope Open Free, have zeroed in on six biblical principles from the from those one and others. I talked about them last week. We're going to talk about it again this week, and we'll talk about it again next week. But we we've chosen six biblical principles out of the out of those one and others to be the foundation of our three core values, and 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 they explain what authentic biblical community at Hope Open Free Church should look like. First one that we talked about last week that we uh, devote daily. In John uh, chapter 15, verse 5, that we pursue relationally in Romans 12, 10, that we, we are to counsel biblically in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, that we are to live authentically and transparently in James 5, 16, to admonish faithfully in Colossians 3, 16, and to engage missionally in Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20. And so, like I said, we're just going to jump into a few of these, and we're going to look at them and what it means. So we've looked at biblical community, and we are going to <clears throat> now take smaller bites of biblical community here. And what is, the first thing is that we are to pursue relationally. <clears throat> Romans 12.10 says, love one another with brotherly love. Some, some translations say, devote to one another with brotherly love, outdo one another in showing honor. The question for you, has anyone ever in your life ever been devoted to you? They probably showed it by caring for you, putting your needs above their own, learning and doing things that, that, that brought you joy and investing time, getting to know you better. That sounds great, doesn't it? Biblical community gives us all an opportunity to practice devotion to one another and experience the joy and growth that it brings. <clears throat> when we invest time in getting to know each other and we pursue one another relationally and we devote ourselves in that way, it shows value to the other person. And, and so we want to be devoted to God first and devoted to others. As he tells us, we are to love God and love others. Last week we talked about our, our first core value being stirred by Scripture, and the underlying issue in that was to devote daily, to, to be devoted to God. Scripture calls us to be devoted to one another, here, for this, for this one. Being devoted to someone else means investing time and energy into the relationship. Loving them as a brother or sister and putting their needs above your own, Philippians 2 tells us. There's also a commitment to be devoted even when it's difficult because a friend should love at all times, it tells us in Proverbs 17. One of the best ways that you can do this is by regularly initiating with one another. Outside of the official gathering time, right? We can't gather in our official gathering time on Sunday mornings right now. We just can't. We're not allowed. And it's not safe. And so we can gather, though, and initiate gatherings in other ways. The, a person who is an initiator, doesn't wait for a phone call, a text, an email. The initiator makes the phone call. They send a text. They send the email. They engage without being prompted. 
don't compartmentalize community into just when we gather together in person. Community happens all the time. It should expand to include other parts of your life, building in as much overlap as possible. And we have an awesome opportunity now with the technology that we have this today to be able to do that still, to be able to be in community with one another still and pursue one another relationally still. Being intentional about getting together and reaching out to one another. It's called practical pursuit, right? And here are some practical ways that your group can pursue deep relationships with one another. The possibilities are limitless, but these are just a few to get us started. First one is to fellowship. Acts 2.14 describes how the believers in the early church did this together. They did life together. Among other things, they devoted themselves to fellowship with one another. Fellowship can be defined as a friendly relationship among people. In other words, be friends. Don't just view the people in your group or the people that you're connecting with um, in your community group uh, as your community group but and not your real friends, but treat them and treat each other like you would treat your good friend. You may not feel like you are good enough with those in your community group, it, it, um, good friends enough with those in your community group. It might, it might even be that hard to build those relationships and friendships. In fact, the Greek word translated devote in this verse implies persistence, perseverance, and endurance despite difficulty. Look, it's going to take work, but intentional fellowship will grow into true lasting friendship as you continue pursuing and investing in each other. Build those friendships, view each other as friends, and pour in and be intentional about it. Care. The Bible says that God has made the body of Christ in a special way so that members can care for each other, for one another, as we call it. 1 Corinthians 12 tells us, Your community group is a smaller expression of the large body of Christ. And you are called to care for each other like you would care for yourself. Look for practical ways to meet each other's needs. Follow up on something that was shared. Write an encouraging note. Bring a meal. Help with an errand. Or find a way to assist in those times of crisis. Now more than ever, we need to be caring for each other. We need to be reaching out to one another. We need to be praying for one another. Look, if you have the opportunity, if you have the ability to, to, to send a meal or, or engage in that way or care for somebody in that way, do it. Prayer. Prayer is something that all Christians should devote their time to and themselves to. In Colossians 4, it tells us that. You should pray for the members of your group and on your own, but you should also pray with each other. Seeking God together is a powerful way to grow your relationships. Be intentional in, not, in, in noting prayer requests that each person has. Pray for them right there in the group time. And be faithful in following up on those requests. Lastly, the fourth thing that I want to talk about is, is, is just having fun together. You know, on your Zoom calls or your Skype calls or whatever it is that you're using, have fun while you're doing that. Enjoy being together in those ways. Prayer is, uh, I'm sorry, ju just because... Community has some serious um, intentionality doesn't mean that it can't be a lot of fun. There is definitely a time to laugh together, Ecclesiastes 3 tells us. Play together often. Find out what each other likes to do and do those things together. Take a weekend retreat together. Don't do that right now. Don't, <laughs> don't go on a weekend retreat right now. But when this is all over, let's do that. Let's spend some time together. Go on a retreat together. Find a fun place to visit. Find a fun activity in town that everybody can participate in. Creativity is an expression of love and a great way to be intentional, intentionally pursuing each other and is to get out and get creative in how you have fun together. Lastly, in this pursuing relationally, we need to embrace imperfections. As you read about ways to build, and or as, as, as we talk about, and we read about through the material that we'll send out and, and the different things. And as you spend time talking about what it means to, to pursue and build relationships and community, you could be thinking, you know, this is all great, but I'm, I'm not sure I even like these people. We all have expectations that we bring into community. We all have expectations. I mean, think about, think about even in your own lives, in, in your marriages, in, 
in your family situations and in, in, in other friendships. You have expectations, and then when people don't meet those expectations, it hurts. And so we bring those into our community groups as well. And one of those may be to, uh, to spend time with others who are just like us. We expect our community group to be just like us, for everybody to be just like we are. Who are easy to know and like, who don't have problems, and who don't require us to get outside of our comfort zone. That's pretty idealistic. And usually that's not how life works, is it? We all have people in our lives that we don't normally get along with or don't fully get along with or we don't agree with on everything. Who definitely push us outside of our comfort zones. And that's the way life is supposed to be. Jesus said that it's not healthy people who need a doctor, but the sick. He tells us in Matthew 9, it's not the perfect people who need community, but the broken, the needy, and the imperfect. And that's all of us. We're all broken, needy, and imperfect. I'm just as broken and needy as the next guy. And that's what it means when, and that's, that means that things can get messy at times. And people won't exactly be who you expect them to be or want them to be. Remember, you may not be exactly what someone else is expecting or looking for either. When we're practicing real biblical community, we get a first look, first-hand look at the struggles and pitfalls and challenges that all of us experience in our day-to-day -day lives. Community can be messy. Right? But when we experience true life, when we are known and cared for by others, God will connect you and your hearts together as a group. When that happens, you will move past being frustrated by your differences to seeing the beauty in them and fully embracing them by God's grace. You will be able to accept and pursue one another in the same way that Jesus accepts and pursues you. Paul tells us in Romans 15. So to be in biblical community, we must pursue one another. We must be intentional about pursuing one another. If we're going to be intentional about devoting ourselves to God and, and intentional about being stirred by Scripture, we also need to be intentional in our biblical community about pursuing and devoting ourselves to one another. The last aspect that I want to talk about here in, in, in our uh, striving to, to reach and be part of uh, of struggling well with life together is that we need to live authentically and transparently with one another. James 5, 16 tells us, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. The question we are asking here is, how are you doing really? Have you ever worn a mask? Maybe when you were a kid and you dressed up for Halloween, you would wear a superhero a mask or or whatever else or even now you you still you've gone to a party in a costume um those masks they can be fun but when it comes to community having a mask on is not a good thing you know my my good friend ben uh who is my accountability partner my closest friend he and i will, will, we talk all, all the time and when we call each other we're like hey how you? like everybody else right you, you get on the phone you answer the phone you're like hey how you doing What's going on? And you're like, oh, I'm good, man. What's going on with you? And, and, and you're talking. But what happens with Ben and I, eventually, is at one point, one of us, every now and then, is, every every time is different on who asks it first, but every, every time we talk, one of us stops and goes, okay, but dude, how, how are you really doing? The tone changed. The way that we said it changed. Everything about it changed. Because we went from, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. Yeah. To, no, really, what's going on? How are you doing? Because he wants an authentic, transparent response from me, and I want the same from him. And, and the beautiful thing is that we've been in, in pursuing one another relationally and being in biblical community with one another and being friends with one another for so long that we can share every aspect of our lives with one another. And we can be authentic and transparent with one another completely. And it may, may feel like, you know, for, for you right now, it may feel like right now you are wearing a mask. You know, we can all be tempted, though, to make ourselves appear to be something that we're not. 
or to make us seem like we're doing just fine when in reality we're not. And right now, it is okay to admit that you are struggling. And especially right now, we need to be admitting these things. Like you're feeling anxious and you're worried and you're, and you're concerned and, and, you know, and, and you're feeling lonely or whatever, whatever it is right now that you are feeling because you are locked in to this quarantine and, and everything else. Now is the time to be sharing that with people. Take the mask off and let people know what's going on. In reality, we're struggling. Maybe we're walking in sin and we don't want anybody to know it. The result of that, kind of wearing that mask and not letting people know those, is a feeling of isolation. And that isolation destroys community. And it goes against all sound wisdom, God tells us in Proverbs 18. Right? We, we talked about it last week. Fools isolate. Wise people seek solitude. Yes, there is times for us to be solitude, go into solitude and seek God and spend our time devoting to Him and chasing after Him and pursuing Him and allowing Him to pursue us and learn and be stirred by His Scripture. But that does not mean that we are to isolate ourselves and be completely cut off from the rest of the world. Don't isolate yourself. Take the mask off and be real. Let people know. Be authentic and transparent. Because in community, it helps us to take Community helps us to take off the mask of appearing to have it all together. It helps us to be fully known and fully loved then. A big way that you can do that is to commit to being completely honest with one another. It means giving others permission to know the real you by being authentic and transparent with them. It's, this lets your community encourage and lovingly challenge you to walk more and become more like Christ. And not to be hardened by the presence of sin in your life, it tells us in Hebrews 3. Sharing your true condition with others isn't about shame, punishment, or condemnation. It's about love, joy, and freedom, Romans 8 and John 8 tell us. Jesus didn't come to give us a burden. He came to set us free from the burden. Jesus came out of love and joy and freedom and grace to give us those things. And so when we confess it, we, we can trust that Jesus has already paid for the sins that we have committed. He's already paid for those. He set us free from the shame and the guilt and everything so that we can be free to share those with people. James tells us to confess with one another. <laughs> confess your sins and, and feel the freedom. Excuse me. Feel the freedom that that brings. We get to know each other's conditions through this. In addition to showing how we are really doing, sharing how we're really doing, part of living in community is to know how the other members of your group are doing. Just as you should strive to be fully known, you should strive to fully know the others. So that you can understand how best to love, care for, and support them. And so in this, you are your brother's keeper, it tells us in Genesis 4. And you can help bear one another's burdens, it tells us in Galatians 6. Look, this, this isn't going to happen overnight. This takes time and trust. You know, the idea of sharing how you really are doing with your group gives you the cold sweats. If that idea gives you the cold sweats, look, I get it. You're not alone. It can feel scary and vulnerable. To present a view of yourself to others that isn't perfect and, and might be really broken. And that kind of sharing takes a level of trust with each other, which usually takes time to build. Ben and I, it's, it took us a little while to build that trust. And, with, and, and same with Becky and I. But we've built it. And it's okay. But you have to take the first step. You have to be willing to take the first step and put it out there. If you have a foundation of love and acceptance in your group, and, and we do here at Hope Open and Free, and that's what it, it's one of the core values of pursuing relationally, is to, to love and accept each other, you can take steps towards being really honest with each other. As you share and your group responds in a loving way, you'll, you'll find that it's built on trust and that it becomes easier and easier to be more natural and open and completely transparent with one another. 
And so with that in mind, it also tells us that God also tells us that we are to bring it into the light. What does it mean to actually share the sin and struggles that we like to keep in the dark? It means to bring those things to the light, it tells us in Ephesians 5. And that's not easy to do either. Since it goes against our sin nature and, and to expose those things. But as Christians, the Bible calls us to live as children of God who walk in the light as we follow him. Uh, Paul tells us in Ephesians 5 and John writes in John 3. This means that we need to confess our sins to one another. Right? James said that, we, we've talked about it a little bit already, but James says confess to one another. Confess your sins to one another. We talked about this a couple weeks ago when we were going through James. We spent a lot of time on this verse talking about how we are to confess our sins to one another. Each of us has a responsibility to quickly and fully confess our sins to others. Confession may feel like punishment, but really it's a gift from God to get it off of our chest and bring mercy and forgiveness and fellowship and healing and purification and restoration. You should be honest about what you're struggling with and why. Look, don't just focus on the behavior either. The behavior is just a, a, a product of the motives and, and the heart of what's behind it. Share what's going on in your heart. Because that's where our sinful behavior come from, comes from, it tells us in Matthew 15. Since the way you live comes from your own heart, if you only confess your actions, the root of the problem will remain unaddressed and in the dark. We need to confess our sins. Bring it to the light. Let it be destroyed by the light of Christ. Okay, so you confess. Now what? No, well, in community, when we pursue uh, uh, relationally and we live authentically and transparently, what do we do next? In response to anything that is confessed, the Bible tells us that we should pray for healing. Right? The same verse, James 5.16, says confess your sins and pray for one another. Confess your sins to one another, then pray for one another. It's, it's one, two. It's, you just follow through. See, prayer is a powerful way to support one another as a community. When someone confesses sin, pray for them right away. Ask God to heal their heart. Share verses from Scripture that speak to what, what they shared. This is what it means when we say one of our values is to, to principles is to counsel biblically. We devote daily so we have knowledge of the Scripture so that we can then counsel biblically when we pursue and live authentically with one another. Celebrate the fact that God is working in their heart. Remember that we are to accept every, each, each other just as Christ has accepted you. Be kind to each other. Be compassionate. And forgive on each other in the same way that, you, that God has forgiven you, uh, Paul tells us in Ephesians 4. And then after you confess, look, you, you're going to feel like a weight's been lifted off your shoulders. It's an amazing feeling. When you confess your sins and you just let it go, so like, it's like an elephant's been taken off of you. You experience forgiveness and fellowship is restored. The next step is repentance, which is an active turning away from your past and from the sin that, that you confessed. Your group should help you and help each other in this process through what repentance looks like and how you can continue to turn towards God and walk away from your sin. The last step then is to move forward. The Bible says that it, when a righteous person falls, they get back up and they keep going. It tells us in Proverbs 24. By God's grace, we can move past what we've done and press on towards Christ. Uh, Paul tells us in Philippians 3. Being confident that nothing we could do ever will make God stop loving us. Romans 8. We talked about that already. How God can't, won't stop loving us because of the things we did. But the great thing is, is that you don't have to be defined by the things that you've done in your past. When we confess our sins, that, that no longer defines us. We are not that person anymore. I am, not the, I am not the same Dave Haney that was before Jesus. I'm different, and I don't have to allow that to define me anymore. We are defined by the fact that we are a child of God, and we are forgiven and restored by Him. So live in that. Walk in that. Again, don't isolate yourself in the dark with your sin. Come out of hiding, confess it to your community, and enjoy the life and healing that will follow. 
This is what struggling well with life together is. It's all about being in community with one another and living it out with one another and doing the one another as a scripture. So we're struggling well with life together. We encourage you to be asking three questions in your groups and with one another. We're going we're gonna to be peppering our talks now with this in our community groups, and we're going to be pushing this out to your community group leaders and, and getting them to engage in this as well. But we want to be asking each other these questions. The first one talks about what we talked about last week and devoting daily to God and, and spending time in God's Word. And the question is, how have you fed your soul this week? Have you taken time to feed your soul this week through God's word and through your relationship and pursuing Him, pursuing God and devoting to Him relationally? The second one is, is for us and what we've talked about a little bit this week. And how have you fed your flesh this week? In what ways are you seeking worldly things? What, in what ways have you fed your, your sinful and fleshly desires and worldly desires? This is where we confess. And then lastly, and this we're going to dive into deeper next week, is how have you fed others this week? How have you fed those around you? How have you engaged people missionally in, in your community this week? And so those are just three questions. How have you fed your soul this week? How have you fed your flesh this week? And how have you fed others this week? And these are three questions that will take us to that deeper, deeper con connection and relationship in community. And these questions, when answered honestly and openly, will help you to be able to live authentically and transparently with one another in community, to struggle well with life together. Look, the church is not a building. It's not this building, and it's, it's not the building that we meet on on Sunday mornings. We are the church. You and I are the church. And we need to be the church more now than ever before by engaging each other as much as possible and struggling well with, with life together through this. God calls us to, do, to, to love one another and to do the one another's of Scripture. So let's be the church and let's love others. I want to close with this. This will be the last thing that I, I talk about. It's an awesome statement that I heard from a friend of mine who is also a pastor about the situation that we're living in at the moment. We were talking on Tuesday night, and, and he was talking to a bunch of us, and we were all, a bunch of pastors were together talking about some things, and he said this right now about uh, how we're doing ministry differently than we, did, than we previously have done it. And he said, right now, we need to touch more than ever because we can't actually touch people. Right now, we need to be reaching out through social media, through Zoom, through phone, through text, through email, Connecting and touching with one, touching one another in those ways because we can't physically be with one another right now. And so now more than ever, we need to be the church and struggle well with life together and live authentically and transparently and pursue one another relationally. We need to be the church. So church, let's be the church. Let's struggle well with life together. We can do this. And we can make a huge impact for God in this way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again so much uh, for this time. Thank you again for this technology that we have to be able to be together, to spend time in your word, to spend time talking. And Lord, I pray as this week goes on, as we're holed up in our, in our homes, <clears throat> Lord, that you will show us and, and stir us and spur us on to be intentional about pursuing one another relationally. To be intentional about living authentically and transparently so that we will struggle well with life together. Lord, help us to do that. Help us to be the church now more than ever. And we pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, guys. Again, next week, keep a lookout on your emails and everything else throughout the week. Uh, and we will be... Sending you all kinds of updates. Check out Instagram and Facebook and the YouTube channel. We're going to put this video up on YouTube later today or tomorrow once it gets done. I get done editing it and everything else. Um, but again, thank you for bearing with us with all the technical issues. Hopefully by next week we'll have this figured out a little bit more. And uh, we'll just keep growing together. We'll keep struggling well with life together. But have a blessed week. And I look forward to hearing from you. Have a blessed day. God bless.